What's up, fish heads? Welcome back to the only fishing podcast that goes behind the scenes of the fishing tackle industry and answers your questions about the latest gear straight from the source. This is North 40 Fish Live. So, uh, for this is called North 40 Live, and it's kind of a new thing that we're doing um, to kind of show you guys some behind the scenes of how it happens here at uh, North 40 uh, um, office and how um, buyers make some decisions on the, the products that they're buying, as well as bringing some of the people that we work with a lot to bring the products that we have in our store um, into the stores and assorted with the buying team. So. Um, these guys have a ton of knowledge and we definitely would like to invite anybody on Instagram Live. Um, Cutter has the Instagram Live control and Olivia has the Facebook Live control. So if you guys have questions on Facebook Live or Instagram Live while we're talking, please ask those questions and we'll do our best to answer them on the show. And if we don't get to them on the show, we'll ask, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer those uh, questions afterwards. Um, so, just so you guys probably haven't seen these faces before in much of our media, Paul uh, Constantine is here. He's our fishing buyer. Um, he also um, buys some other categories, but for days, today's purpose was Strike King Lures. Um, we'll be talking mostly about fishing, and then we have Greg McGowan. Um, so, Greg does not work for North 40. He uh, works for Strike King Lures, and he's the one who kind of brings us and shows us new assortments, what's going on in the industry, and what type of products you know maybe Paul should be looking at to, to assort our different uh, locations with product? We want to just—he's our guinea pig for the first ever North Forty Live, so he's uh, oh, this, he's the first time, first person on the show. So um, I guess the first thing we want to do a little bit for the audience, just a little bit, and maybe even for me and Paul, because I don't think I know enough, um, is who are you and kind of like what's your fishing background? Well, basically, I got into. Uh, as a rep in the rep industry about 15 years ago and I was very fortunate to uh, have striking as one of my main lines um, and over those years I have watched striking grow uh, a ton um, so that's kind of a little bit of my background I don't get to fish as much as I would like to <laughs> for obvious reasons that's a funny uh, thing about being in the fishing industry yeah yeah, yeah, you can't be on a river all the time and fly fish or in my case bass fish or um, whatever. But anyway, um, Striking is the most innovating company in the fishing industry in terms of bass. We have the best pro elite staff uh, assembled that, uh, of any company in the United States. A uh, typical example of one is we just, Jordan Lee, just won the uh, Bassmaster Classic. Um, so we have, you know, we just have a tremendous group of guys that promote us uh, that are just absolutely outstanding fishermen. And in addition to that, uh, Striking also has television shows. The good news there is uh, the consumer can get ideas on a ton of different product that Striking makes um, and how to fish it, what colors to use if the water's murky, if it's clear, whatever the case may be. It's very, very educational. That's been a huge uh, deal to Striking to grow our business in the industry and to help dealers like North 40 succeed with our product line. Yeah, um, so like a little bit about striking, um, where did it come from, how did it start, who's been involved, why, how has it become the most innovative product line? Um, it's striking is I believe 50 or 51 years now um, when they first started. When they first started in business, we were a spinner bait company. And to this day, we are the biggest uh, we sell more spinner baits than any other brand out there. We own that category amongst other categories now. Uh, but that was the emphasis when Striking first started out. It started out as a spinner bait company. Um, and then it's just grown and evolved. Uh, I like to tell, I tell dealers there isn't really hardly anything in our Striking catalog from A to Z that we don't have for the bass fishermen. 
um, which that's very unique in this industry to be able to say that. Since you're like a part of the tour and stuff, like in your mind, what you guys have a lot of plastics, a lot of cranks, and then you said you have a ton of mm -hmm. spinner baits. What of those three categories seems to be being used the most, like on the tour? Um, well, a lot depends on fishing conditions. Um, the different parts of the country uh, that guys are actually out fishing. I mean, the FLW and Bassmasters are primarily, even though they're fishing different lakes, they're fishing basically the same regions from Michigan down to Florida to Georgia to Alabama, etc. Um, and, and a lot just varies. Different pros, I'll give you an example. Um, KVD, uh, which is Kim Van Dam, everybody knows in the industry. In Not the everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I had a funny experience actually at ICAST with one of our reps, huh? <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, Kevin is noted for uh, being a spinnerbait guy. Every pro elite has his gift when it comes to bass fishing and what they're really 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 good at and because they're really really good at that one thing um, they make a lot of money <laughs> uh, and win a lot of tournaments that doesn't mean that they don't fish other things because they're gonna fish whatever catches fish but they're very skilled at what they do and so it, it does vary uh, quite a bit as an example Jordan Lee who just won the classic um, do we want to show the bullworm? Sure. This is this is one of them. This is our uh, BW8. It's an eight-inch bullworm. Um, this was one of the items that he used uh, amongst others um, to win the classic this year. The cool thing about this bait: a couple years ago, we came out with the ten-inch bullworm, um, and the feedback was really good. We had very good sell-through on it. And then a lot of the dealers were asking us, said, hey, can we size that down just a little bit? So this year we did, and uh, guess what? Jordan goes out and wins the Classic. Um, what makes this particular bait really, really unique is on one side, I don't know if you can see this, but that's perfectly flat. And what that does in the water when this bait is falling is it creates a different... Um, decline rate in the water column and how it uh, responds um, it, because it's pushing uh, and dispensing the water as it's falling. If it was a traditional worm and round it would be a completely different action in the water when it's when it's falling. So this has become a real go-to for a lot of people. It's the 8 inch bullworm. And I see this like open pore technology on the front of mm -hmm. these. What does that even mean? Well, this is our first year in actually having open pore technology, which is different than injecting a mold for a plastic. Um, this gives us the opportunity to be uh, an open pore, which means you can combine. Let's just show everybody. Uh, here's a real good example of that open pore technology. This is our drop shot half shell. And if you look at this, you can see all the different colors that are molded oh, yeah. on open pour in that. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see that. So the pour like one layer at a time. Right, right. So you just get a completely different look. This is really taking off. And I think that you're going to see um, in 2018 at ICAST, you're going to see a lot more colors with striking in the open pour technology. Um, I will say, if you're listening on the podcast, we'll make sure we link up each of these items so you can see what we're talking about in the show notes. Um, Paul, as far as like, since we're located, in, most of our physical stores are located in the Northwest, and as far as striking goes, what, what products from striking are you seeing people gravitating to the most as we're mostly smallmouth bass in the Northwest? Um, you know, a lot of the new products that Greg just went through have been um, starting off really well, um, like the 8-inch bullworm. Uh, what else do we got here? The 4-inch ocho. 
the Ochos have done really good for us for a long time. Um, and then the Dream Shots, that was, uh, those came out last year, I think, uh, or two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, those have done really well also. Nice. And this is probably this new, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is our new half shell. This is really taking off. And North 40 also has these. Mm -hmm. Paul added these this last year. Good job, Paul. So a good buyer. He's staying right on the trends <laughs> That's good. With, with what Striking's doing. This is called the Raid Swimmer. Um, everybody, it seems like, in the industry, whether it's us, uh, whoever now has a swim bait, we call ours a Raid Swimmer. Which ma what makes us totally different than everybody else is a lot of guys that are a whole lot more knowledgeable than me in regards to bass fishing, they'll have what they call search baits. So when they're going through and fishing water, they're trying to find bass. They'll use specific baits and then once they lock in and start catching fish, then they might change. And I. An example would be um, a search bait would be like a red eye shad and they'll throw that then once they start catching fish then they might start using uh, some other things uh, in our categories to catch fish. What makes this bait really really unique is you can fish this raid swimmer super slow and yet still get a ton of vibrations with the bait as it's swimming um, because it's got a reverse chime to the bait. So ours is different than probably 80% of everybody else's swim bait like this were reverse chimed. Um, and that makes a big difference in displacing water. All the ways the line, the ridge is moving. Yes, the way. That yeah, it's cut. So it's going to, it's going to create more vibration. The other beauty of this bait compared to uh, everybody else is, is A, like I said before, you can fish this super slow and you can still get the action that you want. You can still get the vibration that you need. You can slow swim this and you can also fast swim it. So that this has been an absolute home run in the Northwest for me um, in, in, in my territory. I mean, this is... This is a phenomenal bait. So uh, one of the other things I think we kind of wanted to share a little bit about is like you do fish sometimes, right? Yes. You have fished in the past. <laughs> yes, I will say what, that I have fished. What, what, uh, what would you say, and Paul, think about this when I ask you the same question. <laughs> what would you say is your most epic fishing moment or story? I'll, I'll answer that, I guess. That's a big um, question. There's there's a there's a lot of them, uh, a lot of great memories. Probably my my favorite uh, is fishing the Ocho, which we have from four inch up to I believe it goes what Paul six inches, mm -hmm. um, seven eight. seven oh, inches. Okay. Um, <laughs> the four inch is new with us. It's been around for about a year, uh, but. I love wacky weeding this because I don't have, as a sales rep, a ton of time to be on the water. I wish I could, but I wouldn't have my job if I spent all my time on the water. Um, but so this is a real easy, very effective bait to fish. Um, again, striking is very innovating in what they do. If you want to get a close up of this bait, this is eight sided. There's eight sides to oh, this bay. Oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so what makes this different than everybody else's is the fall rate on this is totally different and gives a whole lot more action when it's falling because it's again displacing water and it's eight sided. Okay, that's the thing with this and we wacky weed this and I love it because you can throw it out, pitch it out there and just slowly work it up, let it, you know, to where you, it's coming up 10 inches off, coming back down, back up, back down. You can just fish it super, super slow. It's a easy bait 
to fish and catch lots of fish on it. Um, my other favorite thing to do is I love throwing these raid swimmers, um, but more than er anything, um, outside of fishing the Ocho, I love topwater fishing. There's nothing more exciting than watch a bass come up and just hammer a frog on top of the water. It's just, it's just exhilarating. Uh, and we have lots of things from, we have a brand new bait called uh, the Super Toad. That's brand new with Strike King um, this year. This is really a cool deal. When these, it, these are almost like paddles in the water. Everybody's familiar with the rage baits and it's a flanged uh, deal on the tail. So that creates all the, the water and the action and so forth. So this, this is really a fun uh, new bait to fish, uh, as is our popping perch. This is my number one seller currently that I have. I can't keep these in stores and I can't keep the store supplied. It's that hot of an item. It's the pop and perch. And we're gonna open this baby up. Feast your eyes on that baby. Feast your Feast eyes. Your eyes. <laughs> that is super, super cool. So this has a lot of the functions of like a spitting king, of, uh, of our frogs, um, it's just a combination of a lot of things. Believe it or not, uh, our research and development, everything that we have here, the elite pros have to sign off on it. So that means that when we come in and develop a product, it might be two years before it ever goes to market. So we're all about quality and value and price on our products. So it's got to go through a real rigorous uh, testing before it ever shows up on a dealer's floor. And I also think that's really important and part of the success for striking. We want to do it once. We want to do it right. We might not be the first one uh, to the party, so to speak, with a particular item, but generally when we come to the market with it, it's better. Um, so anyway, that's the pop and perch. Thing looks sweet. This thing is awesome. So just because I don't want to awesome. let Paul cop out of the question, what what would that be for you, Paul? Well, since we're talking about bass and topwater fishing, um, one of my best experiences was fishing with you on the Mississippi in Minnesota. Um, we were throwing um, poppers on fly rods uh, all the way down the river, and we were catching four to five pound smallmouth all day. Wow. And, it was amazing because no one else was on the river and one walleye boat in the middle. One walleye really? boat, yeah. And <laughs> Sam and I were floating down in a metal canoe and it had uh, dings in it. And like I was trying to back paddle with one paddle uh, to keep us in the lane. We didn't know what we were really doing um, as we just were hoping to catch some bass, but it ended up being a really awesome trip. Wow. Yeah, that was a good trip. Cool. Cool. So just one last thing. Um, that I just want to ask is, and it doesn't have to be product related, but it could be, um, what's like one piece of guidance you give to just general people that are trying to improve their fishing experience that you've learned from your background in the fishing industry? Um, boy, that's an interesting question, Sam. If, if you're brand new and want to get involved in bass fishing, I'm here to tell you the state of Montana, even though it's trout water primarily, there are a ton of lakes in all of Montana that have warm water species and a lot of bass. Um, I think you guys have, a, uh, it's kind of a hidden gem in Montana in terms of bass fishing, but uh, it, it's there. All you gotta do is go do it. Um, so my my thing would be, easiest thing to do to catch fish for somebody that's brand new is just go to North 40. They carry most of our crankbaits. <laughs> I totally agree with that. <laughs> our red-eye shads. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of them here uh, to show you, but just go in and ask their guys on the retail floor are great they'll help you just tell them hey i want to go bass fishing i've been told that 
uh, probably one of the easiest thing to do to catch bass is to throw a crankbait. That's probably the easiest thing to do. The second thing that I would encourage you to do is throw uh, top water baits like our toads, our frogs, um, our new pop and perch. Um, because the, it, it's an easy thing to do. You can do it with a spinning rod um, and just throw it and just reel it in and you'll be amazed. It's the funnest fishing that you'll you'll ever have bass fishing. Because a lot of bass fishing can get real technical real fast if you want it to be. But it doesn't have to be that way. It's not for me, I promise you. I like catching fish. I think most people do. So just go do it um, and enjoy it. It's, it's phenomenal. Especially take a kid fishing and doing it. That's that's good. No, I totally agree with that. I mean, like, I think when we first started carrying striking, a lot of our our friends that own fishing stores in like the Midwest and the South, they're like, well, you guys don't have bass in the Northwest because that's not what we're known for. But you know, uh, Lake Ponderé, uh, Lake Coeur d'Alene, tons of smaller lakes and ponds. Uh, you know, I'll mention Fort Peck just because it's in the middle of nowhere. And most of you guys aren't going to go there anyways. But they have humongous smallmouth bass oh boy. Um, here in Montana. Um, so there's there is a lot of opportunities to fish for bass and use this type of baits um, just about everywhere in the United States. So. Cool. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, that's thanks for have. joining us, everybody, on Facebook. We'll be trying to do these um, pretty soon posting these every yes ever so often when we get awesome yeah we have no real schedule because it kind of depends on <laughs> when the, when the, when the reps and, and the buyers can come together to do it so i just want to really thank greg for being the guinea pig for our first north 40 live and paul for being here as well